Yoshi Wakabayashi Needle, and this is the Snow Goes Community Laundry Hang Out Your Collated Laundry Thingy, whatever. I don't know. I'm Mike Benedetti, and welcome to the Snow Ghost Community Show. We're here at Elm Park in Worcester, Massachusetts today at the Hang Your Creative Laundry Interactive Art Extravaganza. Let's check it out. First, there was a snow ghost on top of a silver mountain. Now that ghost is your community host. A snow ghost wants to get the most out of you. Cause a better world begins with you. My name is Susan Champany. And Susan, uh, what can you tell me about these red poles? All right, well, I'm the artist that kind of invented these poles. Okay. After I had a barbecue party, we realized we had a lot of red paper plates and cups to dispose of. And we ended up placing them on a totem pole. And I realized that it was actually a very creative, artistic thing to do with them. We came up with the vision between Saori Studio and the Art Museum and me of doing an installation sculpture work here in Elm Park with the totem poles as part of it. So right now we have kids stacking paper plates, plastic plates and cups that are bright red on top of, top of totem poles and then we'll be running lines between them and hanging paper on them and it will be a sculpture that we can walk through and interact with that will probably be about a hundred feet long and it will change through the day. So the poles are the base part of the art, but by themselves they're very showy because they're bright red. They each have a different pattern depending on how people put them together. Uh -huh. And they're 100% recycled materials because even the poles, everything except the concrete in the buckets is recycled, even the water we use to, re to make the concrete. I wanted to ask you about the concept for this event today. Where did the idea come from? Well, originally, we, all of us in the Highland Street neighborhood wanted to do something sculptural for Art in the Park. A number of us attempted to make sculptures. In my case, I made a sculpture that failed, and I wasn't able to enter it in the park project. Wait a second, the sculpture, the sculpture failed because it didn't? It fell apart. Oh, okay. Totally fell, the prototypes <laughs> fell apart in <laughs> April. All right. All right. So I couldn't get something good enough to actually submit to the park. Next year I'll submit that sculpture when we've worked out the structural problems. Some little engineering glitches. Big engineering glitches. All right, all right. It, it was an arch made of chairs and it fell apart. Okay. So Nat Needle and Mihoko of Saori Studio and I had been talking about how could we do something that involved the community and contributed to the art in the park by making a sculpture that was temporary. And we came up with the idea of something that was 24 hours or less. So we set it up starting at 7 in the morning and by 7 at night it no longer exists. It only exists for a 12 hour period, but it could be very large. Mm -hmm. So we came up with the idea of an arcade involving weaving and paper and the totem poles as a way of making something sculptural that was also easy to set up and take down. Right. So the idea is carry in, carry out. We leave no trace behind. When we're done, this will all be gone at 7 p.m. So people only have a 12-hour window to see it, and it will grow and evolve over those 12 hours. Now, there's a really nice uh, public art exhibit in the park right now that you mentioned before. That's right. And But some of it got stolen. One of the pieces got stolen. That's right. It was very sad. Uh, I, I remember the piece well because I saw it before it was stolen, and it was a lovely piece. And it's, I think it's really too bad that people feel like they have to take off with artwork. In this case, we, we were already in process figuring out this project, and we weren't worried about theft. We were much more worried about sending, well not worried, we wanted to send a message about the community doing something positive in the park. So we kind of see this as a way of counteracting that by the community actually creating the artwork and then taking it away. In this case, if the artwork you know, we may send totem poles home with people. Actually, I'm taking them home to my barn and photographing them. But the idea would be it could be a completely distributed sculpture when it was done, mm -hmm. and everyone would get a piece of it. So it's got a different purpose, but also its purpose is to be community, and to build community, and also create something out of almost nothing. So in this case, we kind of designed a sculpture to be weatherproof, people-proof, and 
theft proof and that it'll be gone. And, and that if you want to steal it, we can just make some more. We can make some more. And, and one of the things that I've always dealt with as a public artist is you're always dealing with the elements and human beings are one of the elements in the world. One of these sculptures could be taken out by a lightning strike just as easily in the next three months. We know how the lightning has been lately. So I like to make sculpture that is something people can enjoy, but if it gets destroyed by the end of the three months or by the end of the day, it's not as big a deal because part of the sculptural aspect for me is the act of making it, that the creative act is the important part. So that's why my philosophy is more carry in, carry out, leave no trace when you're done, environmental style artwork. Mm -hmm. Ace and Needle. Yes. What is this? This is Japanese paper dyeing. You take rice paper, you fold it up, like, and it's almost like tie-dye. You dip it into several watercolors and then press it with a towel, unfold it, and you have this unique pattern. And like saori weaving, which we're also doing here, you never know exactly how it's going to come out because the paint spreads and doesn't go into certain channels so you get weird white spots and different colors and weird patterns and it's very nice and it, the end result is always beautiful. These are like the winning creations that the little kids would do or anybody could do it. Um, they start out with this plain little cardboard and this is like a foam and then we use like a pencil to write, like, to do any kind of design on it. So we'll just do like anything, you know, really. Like that. And what they want to do is actually press it really hard because it's like we're making stamps, basically. So they want to press it really, really hard. And then after they make the design, you use these like paint things right here. Here you go. Like we take that. And you just take, like, let's say a color, let's say I want blue, and I just like roll it over. We're basically making like small little stamps, like that. And then we have to use the paper, like she's doing, how she's rolling the paint on it. Okay. And then they want to put it. Now, where do you want to put that yep. where you want? You got to get a different page. So. Wait, so what's she doing now? She's putting on a piece of paper? Yeah, she's putting on a piece of paper. And, and she's going to get a clean piece of paper. Okay, there. And they're going to take the one that's not been used by any color and then just roll it over. It's an easier way than just like pressing it down. Let's see. Okay. I know. Is it supposed and to be this up, And we'll take it. Yeah. There you go. They like start to say anything about it. You can just go to the Hey, cool. And after they finish, they hang it up on the laundry line. A lot of kids are doing like flowers. And this one girl, she did herself. Yeah. And then, yeah, this is like the flower. This is really pretty flower. So this is another flower right here. We're doing a lot of flowers. <laughs> well, this is a, a weaving. It's a freestyle weaving, and it's an improvisational, experimental weaving, which there's no pattern to follow. You can make up as you go. Drum roll, please. I'm putting a pine cone. I'm putting a pine cone in this. Yes, he's putting a pine cone. It's very suspenseful. Now what do I do? All right, now you just keep on weaving. So just ignore it. Imagine it wasn't there. Pretend there's no pine cone there. And we. So anybody can do it. But it's this is called saori. It's actually from Japan, and you can do whatever you want. But okay. if it's really deeper than that, it's um, really you know try to weave your spirit and just what you you know express yourself like a writing poems and painting it's the same way but it's a uh, weaving. How long have you been doing this kind of weaving? Uh, for myself maybe 15 years by now. How did you get in how did you get introduced to it? Well it's I like making things I like arts in general um, but it's making things from you know from 
all materials to making things um, like clothing is something to was something appealed to me okay. and that uh, start with and uh, but it's this is not just weaving it's not learning technique it's using so when you learn how to like ride a bicycle but the where to go it's, it's up to you right right so it's like that it's learn how to setting up warp and just weave it's a basic round basic structure then how the play with colors and materials different textures um, it's up to me and it's really fun and also through this weaving there are so many people um, have struggled because it's so free it's hard to do it for some people really? you know, because people are um, expected to do right thing then the, there's in art in general there's no right or wrong you, whatever you do is just fine as it is but some people it's hard to accept that but it's really fun just I see people doing this through you know more gain confidence in you know little by little and um, explore different adventure, new materials, new patterns, and gain more confidence, and that's that's the most fun part. Of it. That's pretty neat. Yeah. Do do people try to? What do I want to say? When when people are working on it, is it the kind of thing where people where people should be thinking hard, or the kind of thing where people should be maybe not trying to? think so much and plan so much. Right, right. It's it's using like right brain, right? Right brain yeah. activities. It's I think it's very soothing, relaxing and therapeutic. Just uh -huh. just not not thinking anything. Right. And it's called moving meditation. When you we, we don't follow any pattern so you don't know how that piece is gonna be. You don't know the future. And weaving when you you know, keep weaving this the weaving cross have to be one so you can't quite see whole thing you have done it mm -hmm. so you have to be a present moment with a little area you just weave in mm -hmm. so that's like a meditation it's a moving meditation it's just be present moment and just think moment and have fun there you go. And sometimes you guys turn the cloth into clothing, and sometimes uh -huh, yeah. you just bags and hats and different things. And this is made out of the. This is what you're wearing today is made out. Yes, of Yes, that's a cotton. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Can you can you tell me about the idea for this whole event at all? A whole event is just we saw this uh, art in a park, this sculpture thing, and well for. Uh, for myself, I'm a fiber artist, so I don't think quite sculpture in the park. I didn't think it's my thing, but um, talking to uh, Sue Champagne and uh, Nero and um, Alex from um, the museum, just oh, we, we can have just one day event to to be part of the sculpture event and have fun and with the you know contribute the community and. This is something everybody can touch and can play with. You know, right. it's not just like art and don't touch and it's, you know, yeah. it's much closer to kids, people friendly. Yeah. yeah. And there's been all kinds of people coming out. There's been people, you know, little kids, old people, mm -hmm. people in wheelchairs, right. people with their dogs. Yeah, that's wonderful. Yeah. I'm glad. Uh, yeah. We are from United Way of Central Massachusetts and the program that we're running is the Points of Light Youth Leadership Program and it's part of the Points of Light Foundation. Um, so, and pretty much what's been going on this summer is um, the past two weeks, we've had our institute, um, which kids come in and they learn leadership skills, and we involve them in community service activities. And along the way, we kind of teach them about um, project planning and, you know, possibly if they're interested in starting their own programs at their school, we really try to encourage um, ideas on how to do that. We're doing our community service day today. Oh really? So you haven't done anything like this so far? We have. We worked. Uh, we're doing a food drive actually downtown at different companies. Okay. And we also went to a farm in Grafton. Okay. And we picked over 800 pounds of uh, fresh fruit, fresh food, vegetables, and fruit to go to the um, food shelters in Worcester. Awesome. 
And now you're working on this art project. Yeah, we're, we'll be here from seven to seven. Actually, we're leaving at three for our graduation today, but it'll be open all day. Well, congratulations on your Thank graduation. Thank you very much. Thanks for talking to us. Yeah. Does art have a role to play in economic development? It sure does. It, uh, it increases the, the quality of life in cities and places. And um, for instance, Worcester has a major problem with with a lot of college students leaving, you know, as soon as upon graduation. Right. And, you know, part of it could be attributed to the fact that you ask any college student, very often they'll say, you know, that there's nothing to do in Worcester, you know, and that's, right. that is a problem. And um, I think that, that if there was a, a great art scene, you know, lots of festivals, that sort of thing. I like it, I especially like the, the red cups and plates. I think that looks really cool. It's very striking. Mm hmm It is. So I wasn't sure it was cups and plates from far away. I thought it was just some cool, weird pole. When I got up front, I was even more impressed by it when I saw it was cups and plates. Mm. It's kind of neat because some of them have been falling down. So then, mm. then they just put up guy lines and then they hang stuff off of the guy lines. Uh -huh. So it just gives you more. It just it just is growing like a like an like an amoeba. Yep. Yeah. And I like that. I like the idea of I don't know if this is the idea, but or at least me thinking of it as the idea of like having these little kids teaching the little kids of like creating something and then just putting it out there. It's like a sandcastle, you know. It's not like you're not making something to keep and frame. You're just like making something to give away instantly. It's cool. Yeah, that's that's a good that's a good point. Sandcastle is one of the few like public sculpture things that most kids engage in as a matter of course. Mm -hmm. It's like very non-selfish. It's like kind of a weird concept for a kid to think of or why you would do that. It's a little bit like chalk drawing too because it's all and mm -hmm. all three of those because they're all you're putting it out there and there's not this sense that it's going to end up on the refrigerator at home. Yeah. yeah right. That it's just is going to get thrown away or washed away by the tide or mm -hmm. the rain. The rain came very close to destroying this stuff. Mm -hmm. oh. And it would have been okay. Maybe that would have been part of it. We were actually secretly rooting for that to happen. <laughs> <laughs> for that to happen. Dan, what is your take on uh, this? What are your thoughts when you see this stuff? Um, kind of on the same page with Casey. I, 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 I really, my favorite part was the, uh, the red cups, little the little red cup towers, and uh, I just like clothesline stuff. Yeah. I, I, I actually haven't even gotten up close and looked at what these pictures look like. <laughs> that, that to me has been one of the rewarding things because, you know, again, from a distance, it looks great, but it also just looks like, well, okay, so it's a bunch of stuff. It's a bunch of sort of colorful things. And then you get up close and some of them are really nice. Oh, nice. You know, some of them, some of them are not that exciting to me and some of them are just like, this is a nice little piece of cloth or, or uh, whatever, a nice yeah. little piece of work. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Now you guys are both you guys are both committed to art in the city of Worcester, interested mm -hmm. in art, interested in the uh, uh, promotion of the city of Worcester. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, what do you what do you think about I don't know. What's I don't personally care for the mural that's going at the beginning of Green Street. Okay. I'm not sure if I'm gonna hurt somebody's feelings by saying that. But um, it's not personal. Just don't care for it the way mm -hmm. it looks. And the subject matter of it it's like this kind of a non reality pie in the sky kind of an idea that the the image itself you mean of the people painting yeah 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 and just like the sun setting behind the city and where and these and people the, the people in like the Worcester. in the in the drawing mm -hmm. i mean the people in the image are up in this up They're up outside. river in some green like pretty area and to me that's not even what worcester is worcester, yeah. worcester is a very rough looking place the architecture and the rundown house there's a lot of rundown houses and buildings and that's cool to me that's not or it's it just is it just is what it is i mean and to make the a city Worcester look like that is not so much of anything having to do with Worcester. there's also a lot of bad signs in worcester like store signs <laughs> like the living earth sign you can't even read that it says living earth so you think that so you think that poor is, signage all right wait are you saying that that's like part of Worcester that we should celebrate or that we should have better signage? There should be better art and sign, yeah, that kind of stuff. What that's, else had a that's bad all, sign? Cactus Pete's. The things that you had, had yeah, that sign was terrible. And just the things you have to look at when you're driving around this city. I wish somehow they could just be better. I don't know. You know what I'd like to see? I'd like to see more murals and more signs. Yeah, I love, mur I love the murals. So that like, if it was like, that mural is bad, 
whatever. There'll be could be another mural right next to it. Yeah, that's like true. that mural's yeah. awesome. You know, the yeah. same thing with signage. Right? But I think it's nice promoting creativity and art, yeah. right? Yeah, Those yeah. are nice things for a city to yeah. support. I like Alex Dunn. He Alex works for the Art Museum and does the education outreach. So I trust people like him making decisions about things like yeah, that. Totally. I think it's really cool that the Art Museum has supported this because this yeah. is like the kind of this is like a very grassrootsy kind of a mm-hmm. thing. Yeah. And the Art Museum does not always. S- mm. signify grassroots in people's minds. Yeah, that's yeah, true. It's true. Yeah. So what are you guys excited about art-wise in the city? Where are things going right? Maybe music, art, some good music happening, right? That band, The Orange Ocean, people yeah, are very excited about that Ocean. band. It's pretty good. And like, you know, playing over at the dive bar as people play. I feel like it's fun, like a little bit of that kind of scene developing, which is cool to see in Worcester. Yeah. There's a good little variety going on right now. I'm you know, house shows, it. all those things. That's cool. It's cool I live in a city that has those things supported and, you know, whatever. A lot of house shows. Invested in a lot of people making yeah. their own fun in Worcester. Yeah, yeah exactly. definitely. So that's good to see. And maybe the city maybe feels like the city's a little bit behind on jumping on that bandwagon or something of yeah. supporting it. But maybe stuff like this, maybe it's, you know, it's cool. Maybe it's doing better. Yeah, I guess it would look at like a city like Providence that has a lot of nice art around all the time they also have like one of the best art schools right in the middle of it you know one of the best art schools in the country so if Worcester yeah it's it's a little tougher for us to yeah it's it's, the art thing really going right it's like saying it's easy it's easy to be Cambridge and have a big you know a technology industry around you whenever you have MIT and Harvard Yeah, yeah yeah right Right. You know, it's harder. It's harder to think. How do you get that whenever you don't? Yeah. Well, Worcester totally. seems to have a good, um, like, critical mass of people who know how to make things happen for themselves mm. when they don't have that kind of support. Mm-hmm. So that's good to yeah. see. Yeah. I don't like that mural though. <laughs> <laughs> I'll make sure that part's in there. The, yeah, the I love the. Sign. <laughs> do we, should we counteract a little positive with that negative though? Say something the, super positive. The, the mural. On the side of the Y. At the side. Oh, wait, I'm the thinking of the one that's Piedmont on the Chandler. corner of Piedmont and Chandler. I love that one. Next to the acupuncture And then one on the Y is nice. The acupuncture place. It used to be where the REC is, and it was a kung fu studio. That's a really cool mural. I think Tom Lewis worked on that. I really like with the skeletons and then like mosaic sun. That's yeah. a really cool mural. Yeah, I love that's that. where it's where art is going well in Worcester. And the side of the Y. We need more skeletons in our art. Yeah, yeah we love yeah. the skeletons. Definitely. I like that a lot. <laughs> Put it on that third thread. One, two, three. See how these gold bars? They're both threads. One, two, three. And put it on that end string and let all the other fingers just hang loose. Now play it. Now play it. That's the that's that's a that's a G chord. We're gonna sing it. Keep going. This is the one chord song. With the one chord song, you can't go wrong. Sing along with the one chord song. Jacob, what do you think about art in Worcester? Um, Worcester has a really good scene for art because um, because the scene for art in Worcester sucks. Um, and that's a good thing you're saying. Or it's a good thing for art? Yeah, because you can't really get over by being an artist in Worcester. I mean, if you're if you live in Worcester and you have pretensions of being like a fine artist, you're you're a chump. You know, you're fooling yourself. Um, so the only reason to really do it is because you're sort of like compelled to do it, or you're obsessed, or you're like weird, you're like you touched in the head or something. So what you're saying is that Worcester actively discourages people from doing art, and therefore only the most committed do art. I'm not saying there's an act of discouragement. Um, it's more like uh, it's tough. You just don't get anything. There's nothing to get by by wearing a beret and eating a baguette and you know going to the pickle barrel and trying to sell your paintings for a sandwich. Um, <laughs> you get a sandwich out of it. Yeah. I don't know that you could. I don't know that that's entirely true. Um, yeah, it's good. It's good. There's it, it's good when there's no reason to do something. Because then when people do it, it's fucked. It's like, it's natural, you know, it's like a weed growing. That's what's ideal. Any, you know, any anything can grow in a garden. Big deal.
So what's the plan? The plan is that we're going to start disassembling the sculpture at this point. Okay. It'll probably take us about two hours to fully pack everything out. We might be, get lucky and be able to do it in an hour. Okay. But with rain, everything takes a lot longer to do. Right. So the idea is we've some of the poles have laid down on their own. <laughs> the others that don't will take down. Mother Nature has given us a hint. Mother Nature has given us time. a hint. But one of the things we're trying to do is salvage as much of the art as we can. So here's one, here's some which have been modified by the rain. Yeah, it's sort of like, you know, the art, it's like the heavens weren't satisfied with what we were making, so they decided to sort of mix it up a little bit, sort of <laughs> wash together the colors. Cool. I thought it went pretty well. Well, I thought so too. I was real happy with it. A lot of people came. It was a lot of fun. I like blossom. So that's easy. Are you guys? Are you guys out on a, a blossom? Is two blocks missionary thing? Yeah, that's right. Where are you guys from? Well, myself. Yeah, I'm from um, California. Where? Where about? Santa Ana. I've been to Santa Ana. Yeah, I've lived in Santa. We're residing in Utah right now, actually. All right. Yeah. Have you been involved in a lot of public art stuff? Is this like? Is this, would you say? Would you say this is atypical, or would you say crazy stuff like this has been happening all the time? I always, always like exotic art. Pretty much, <laughs> it's better than the still art that you see at museums, and I like more of a flavorful, flavorful kind of thing. Yeah, it's good stuff. It's good stuff. Although a museum, they clean up for you. Yeah. Here, you have to put in a little extra work. <laughs> you have to be quiet. Or you can be loud. <laughs> right, Sue? Blossom. Right. Blossom two blocks. I believe so. Yeah. Now, how do you think it went? Well, I'm very, very happy about this. It was just for me, it's the joy of, for me, this is what human beings are about. We proved that human beings of all uh, ethnic groups and ages can come together and make relationships with each other through shared creativity. And that's all I want to say.